So we'll get a little closer to the reality of constraints when we talk about the different kinds of constraints we might face. One example of a constraint is a people constraint, which means that I don't have people, I don't have workers to do my work. Uh, frequently, we, 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 uh, we, we, we come up against this all the time. Uh, we'll talk a little bit later about the, the deli counter example. Time constraint, very, very common. Everybody deals with time constraints. Anything that's time critical limits our options. Uh, dependency constraint, that means that we have to wait for some other value to be produced before we can do further processing. That represents a constraint on our portion of the system. Sometimes we face specification constraint when we have delays due to incomplete, poorly understood, or other problematic specifications that we must resolve in order to continue with our work. A very common and unfortunately very pesky and frequent constraint is what we call a policy constraint. And a policy constraint or is a process or policy that's created by the organization with good intention, but that actually very negatively impacts delivery. In other words, the constraint of a policy is not worth the cost of the delay of the policy. And equipment constraint, physical constraint. I may have insufficient or inoperable equipment I may have insufficient execution space in my virtual services. These are all common constraints. There are other kinds of constraints. It's a kind of exhaustive list. I'll go through a few more. Uh, talk about demand constraints on a market, which means that if the demand is less than the production capacity, we have a demand constraint. We don't want to produce more than the market will demand. Similarly, we have capacity constraints, which means that the, our ability to deliver to the market is less than the market demands, which means we have to increase our capacity to remove that constraint. Every now and then we have a market constraint, typically, which is when a company entirely captures or corners a market, and it means that there's no room to grow, or it can also mean that a company's market has become obsolete or outdated. Very frequently, we deal with supply the supplier constraints or material constraints when raw materials aren't available for production. We could also think about this both in the manufacturing sense and in the software sense that we have suppliers, the raw materials that we use to build our value. And lastly, the financial constraint, which everybody has to contend with, which means there's only so much uh, money on the money tree. We have to be able to purchase raw materials. We have to be able to process those. We have to be able to deliver those. Kind of, if uh, our in, we don't have the ability to purchase or process, then it's insufficient to meet the market demand. We call that a financial constraints. So constraints are actually everywhere. What's interesting about the theory is that it exposes so many of these things and the commonality of them is that they all somehow or another impact our ability to deliver most efficiently. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.